Welcome back to my channel. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Alright. <clears throat> Today I got a story for you. It's a true story. It has crime in it. And murder. Okay, now. I just want to start off by saying that if you are weak in the knees, in your gut, or you don't like to hear anything about children, or death or anything, leave now. Okay. <laughs> so, today's story was about 10 years ago, okay? I um, had this best friend and she lived down the street about um, maybe like a six minute walk. And she lived next door to this family a family of literally like eight kids, maybe six the least, but it was a lot. So this family had been living there for quite a while because they were constantly um, driving the little minivan that had the husband, the dad, and like a whole row of a bunch of kids, okay? Anyway, and... From what I heard, uh, the lady was basically the only one, uh, no, he was working too, but the lady also had a job, and who took care of the kids? I have no idea, and they were all little, sort of like, like a staircase, you know, it was like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, none of them were over age, they were all kids, and whatever right it was just a big family that you know lived in that house or trailer and one day i went to go see my friend and i stole my dad's truck his bourbon and i drove that way but because i was so new at driving there was this car right it was a car that was parked um basically in the middle of the road and so I couldn't go around it I had if you know what a suburban is you know those things are huge okay and me being new at my driving I could not go around it and the ditches were kind of like steep you know so I was not gonna risk it and get caught taking dad's truck boy please so anyways and I start honking so they can come and move their vehicle yes I did yes I did and I could see but the thing is the reason why I honked was because I could see this man sort of leaning in a car like an abandoned car and it didn't have doors so I could see him leaning but in a very awkward position kind of like he was tired you know he was leaning he was leaning and his head was tilted back like that and he was just like super leaning on it right and I was like what the hell is this guy doing so I was like how about you move from there and move your car gosh darn it right so I continue honking until he finally leaves and or not leaves gets away from his car and comes and moves that car. He's moving and me and my friend in the car and we're just like, yeah, you better move and blah, 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 you know, whatever. Tell me why a little girl pops her head out from inside that car and leans over to look and I was like what the hell is that little girl doing there 
And what was that man doing leaned up like that next to that little girl, right? Like everything just didn't make sense. And he um, he yelled something because he pointed out and was like, you know, and she hid back inside the car and I freaked out, you know, I'm like, this better not be what's happening, you know, and, you know, like child abuse, basically, right? Or <sighs> so I'm over here like freaking out because. Who wants to see anything like that? You know what I mean? So then I'm like, what the hell? And then we pull over to her house because she was like the neighbor. And it was like only just a couple of feet away from her house. So we go to a certain room in her house where we can see perfectly. And and we freaking hurry up and go and go to that room and see him. And he's like bringing the little girl in from the car now we um we were freaking out and we literally sat in that window for about two hours just staring to see anything and nothing so we kind of just like let it go and i myself felt super guilty because i can't believe i let that little girl live there but if I'm not too sure, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know. I'm 33, 10 years ago, whatever age that is. So I'm guessing I was pretty dumb still, you know, and I just couldn't believe it. And I lived like that for about five years, just like hating myself for letting the little girl stay there in that house if anything was going on so literally i was like literally i uh talked to god and well he didn't answer right well he did answer you know god works in mysterious ways so i had talked to god because it was really in my heart hurting me you know to know that i didn't do anything about it so, um, I, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I asked God and I said, if there's anything going on in that house, please get those kids out of there. And whatever way those kids need to be out of there. Because what are the chances in getting caught? You know, those pedophiles are the worst people ever. Okay. My backdrop doesn't let me see who's out there. So anyways, and, um, you know, I, I really asked from the bottom of my heart because it was killing me inside, literally. Like, I could not stop thinking about it. And I even asked the neighbors and across the street, you know, like, hey, have you noticed anything weird about their family? And they're like, no, they're a big, happy family. Remember, like, a family of, like, 30 so I was like, I don't know, dude. Um, I think I saw something and n the neighbor was like, nah, that couldn't, that couldn't be it. He's not even like that. And we talked to him and blah, blah, blah. He's friends with my dad and he's not like that. And so I'm like, all right, you know, whatever. So then that's basically when I, around the time I asked God, you know, like, help me you know not feel like this so like i said like about five years passed by and um on the news i tried to look this up but i guess i gotta know their names because i don't <laughs> but um on the news it came out that a family and it happened to be that family. Um, the husband went crazy because apparently the wife was going to leave him. And like have a new family or something. 
that's what the story goes, right? And she, apparently she was dating her boss or something like that. I don't know. Basically, I think there was cheating going on. And he took him to the park, I think somewhere in this area called Katy, Texas. I don't know. If anybody can look it up, please let me know because I, I want to know. And then, um, <laughs> he had his family in the van and I guess the wife and him were arguing or whatever and he shot the wife in the van and left the kids in there with the dead mom and I think they found him like a day later, a couple of days later because I something about the mom was hunched over there's a woman hunched over and there was kids in the car and they weren't getting out or whatever turns out that he had locked those kids in there with the mom forcefully and he went to jail so that's as far as i know okay i don't know any details which i would like i said i would love to read into that but that is so like I felt like God heard me and listened to me but I was like oh my gosh poor kids there are traumatized right and I just I couldn't believe it you know and I was really glad that something went happened you know oh man I'm so jiggly because I was I don't know, but I just feel like that was God um, listening to me and doing something about it. Maybe he was worse than, than that, you know, than doing that to his children. Maybe he did worse things, you know, and that's why he met a horrible end. And then, oh my gosh. so yeah but I don't talk to that friend anymore so I couldn't get extra details and she moved away from that spot and then the guy who lived across the street that apparently his dad was friends with him we didn't talk either because he actually stole my car so I stopped talking to him obviously it was my brother's friend but anyways that is a story about my guilt or how God helped my guilt go away. But, um, sorry it was so short. Um, no questions, please. Because I basically said everything that came from my heart, from the memories and, you know, whatever. Ugh, it's so horrible just to think about it. I better not ruin my day. But anyway. Okay, on that note, I guess I'm going to go. I'm just going to finish my eyelashes. And change. Inside my job. <laughs> I'm so paranoid that I get watched and stared at and so embarrassing and look at me still stalling it's because you know when i do my eyelashes i um try to focus really hard okay so anyways and if anybody has a story like that i would like to hear that too you know just like strange things happen and then something else stranger I don't know. But that, in fact, is a true story. Ugh. Okay. Alright, I'm really gonna go. I'm really gonna go now. All right, hasta la vista.
babies.